Hi everyone. In this video, you guys are going to learn how to use the linear tool, um, the linear uh, pattern tool and on shape. Sorry, I lost my word there for a couple of minutes. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to look at this, um, this image that I'm going to show you. So it's a really simple image. Um, I hope you guys haven't used on shape before. Um, for the people who have used on shape before, it must be a lot easier um, to identify it, how to make this. But for the people who haven't used it, I want you guys to be really honest here and just tell me straight up, just think about it. How would you create this image? You don't need to create all of this, um, these lines. Just think about how you would create each of these individual circles. Okay, I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about that. Okay, time's up. So what I, how I think noobs would do it, noobs um, would basically think about doing every individual circle, dimensioning it over and over and over again from equal distances. Okay, you're not wrong. It's not that you can't do it that way. It's just too time consuming, right? So I'm going to show you guys how to do it more efficiently. So if you guys um, want a little bit more practice, I did make another video on linear patterns about with the drain plate. So you guys can go and watch that. But for now, this is just the basic ideal creation of it. So I'm gonna first create my document, my document over here. And I'm going to label it linear, linear pattern. There we go, tutorial. And I'm gonna click the blue OK button to confirm the creation. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, there we go. So I'm going to first just let, let my on shape load. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to create this, but on like a super flat surface. So maybe something like a rectangular prism. I don't know. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to create my rectangular prism. I'm going to come to my top plane, come to my sketch button, click on sketch, and right click on my plane and click on view normal sketch plane. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a center point rectangle. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to come to my rectangle tool over here, click on this drop down and click on center point rectangle. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna to come to my origin, click, extend outward, and I'm gonna click. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dimension it. I'm gonna dimension my width, um, and I'm gonna make it six inches. Then I'm gonna dimension my width. Okay, so this was my length, I'm sorry for my incorrect user terminology, and I'm gonna make it three inches. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish my sketch and I'm gonna extrude it. So I'm gonna come and I'm gonna click on extrude and I'm gonna make the depth one inch and I'm gonna select new. I'm gonna make it a new extrusion. So I'm gonna select my new tab. Then I'm going to make the extrusion face to sketch one. And then I'm gonna make the depth one inch and I'm gonna click the green check button. Yep, there we go. Now I'm going to come to this camera and render options, click on isometric view. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my front and my right plane. So I'm going to hide my front and my right plane so that I have a more clear view. Then I'm going to go to my top view again, and I'm going to click on my top. I'm going to make a sketch. So what I actually want to do here is I actually just want to create a bunch of holes. Don't ask me why, I just do. Um, I want to play nail the hammer, or I, I just wanna make holes, okay? I wanna make holes in my rectangular prism. So how we're going to do that is I'm first going to make a center point circle. I'm going to click on my center point circle tool and I'm going to come and I'm going to randomly make a circle somewhere. Right, I'm gonna make it right there. 
Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come dimension it. I'm going to dimension it to 0 0.5 inches. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my constraints and I'm going to use the horizontal constraint on the center point and this point. So I want to make it parallel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the parallel constraint um, for this from the center point of the um, circle to the actual circle. Okay, um, seems like that's not working, probably because I should have made it tangent. Oops, silly me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my line tool. I'm gonna use my line tool. And I'm going to make a line that's straight, right? I'm gonna click escape to exit the line. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a construction, obviously. So I don't, it doesn't count as part of the sketch. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the coincident constraint. I'm gonna use the coincident constraint. And I'm going to take the midpoint of the circle to the actual construction line that I made so I can adjust it. Then I'm going to check the dimension of the line, right? I'm gonna make the dimension 0 0.5, okay. And that's, and then I'm going to make the distance between this center point of the circle and the edge for um, 0 0.45 inches there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click escape and I wanna create multiple copies of this. Let's say I'm gonna, so how I'm gonna do that is I'm actually going to come to my linear pattern tool and I'm going to select it and I'm going to sketch select the circle. Then it's going to ask me the distance and how many times I want to move it, how many times I want to duplicate it. So I want to make my distance one inch and I want to maybe duplicate it five times. And I think I can go a couple more times. I can go one, six more times. So six times, sorry. Uh, and then I'm going to make yeah, I think that's it. So I'm going to make my check and I'm going to delete this construction line. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a construction line. I want to duplicate it vertically, right? So if I want to duplicate it vertically, I'm going to be honest here, there is not a way to duplicate it vertically. I don't believe there is. Um, so how we're going to do that is we're going to use the mirror tool. So it's right next to the linear, um, linear pattern tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to make use our line tool. And I'm going to draw my line. Random distance. It doesn't really matter because we're going to dimension. And we're going to click escape. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check the height from the center point to this. Yeah, I made it 0.5, didn't I? Okay, so it's 0.5. Okay, so I'm gonna click escape. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this midpoint and this line, and I'm gonna make it 0 0.5. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on the line and I'm going to make a, a construction line. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the mirror tool and it's gonna ask me to select a mirror line. I'm going to select this mirror line over here and it's gonna ask me for the entities that I wanna mirror. So I'm going to use a window here and select all of my circles so I can duplicate them. So then I can, that's how you duplicate it, right? So then what I can do is I experimented here. Okay, there we go. So that's all we need to do. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to now delete this dimension. And let's see. So we can drag it up and down. So see the really cool feature here is when you delete the dimension, you can actually drag the mirror line down and the circles will adjust with it. So that's a pretty cool feature, right? 
so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make it a center point, I guess. So I'm gonna find the center oops, of this line. I'm gonna find that by making a point on the line and I'm going to select the midpoint constraint and I'm gonna select the line and the midpoint and the point and I'm gonna make it midpoint. Okay, so it is in the midpoint. So see, that's a really cool feature here. You can adjust it when you don't have any constraints on the mirror line. So that's all for this video. Oh, and if you guys really wanted to get fancy with it, you could just extrude it inwards. So how you can do that is you can come to your extrude tool and you can select um, your circles and you can click on remove. Oh, okay, that just, no, that's not right. So um, I'm gonna first go to isometric view because I wanna see what I'm selecting. So how you're gonna do that is you're gonna select all of your circles uh make sure you see that you're highlighting everything not just the outer rim so how you can check on that is you can actually make a window and you have to go from the you have to click on the inside of the circle so you can click on the inside of the circle to see if you're highlighting it. And it should turn this weird orangish color, right? It should turn this really musty, green, nasty color. No offense on shape, uh, but I don't, I'm don't. i not a really big fan of that color. No offense to the people who are. Everyone's preferences are different. Or you could just um, highlight the entire circles and unselect the pieces that, no, that's not a very efficient way. But I believe if you select, you have to select them individually. Someone please correct me if I'm wrong. I remember there was a way not to do that, but for now, you can just select all of your pieces. Then you can click on extrude and you can click on remove and you can click on through all and you have your extrusion, you have your holes. Yay! So that's how you use the linear pattern tool in Onshape. If you guys have any questions, as always, please use my email to email me your document or something like that. Or you can um, just simply you can just uh, put it in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you on that one. So yeah, thank you so, so much for watching my videos and keep learning. Bye, thank you.